Hey everyone, it's Ashley and I'm bringing you a video today all about markets. And specifically, because I talk about markets a lot, I'm going over the specific questions that I ask to event organizers and market, I don't even know, production organizers and event planners. These are the questions that I ask to figure out if a market is right for me. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ashley. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I like to make videos all about running a business, all about marketing a business, all about really anything. I have been running a candle business since 2020 and I've been taking you guys along with me and really just kind of like layering the cake in regards to all of the things that I know from an educational and experience background and just applying it as I go through these different milestones with my candle business. With today's video in mind, I am multitasking because I have quickly found that um, either my production of candles gets behind schedule in trying to run a YouTube or my production of videos gets behind in trying to run a YouTube. I dropped a wick. Hold please. So I'm multitasking and I am wicking these little travel tins that I make while I'm making this video because two birds, one stone multitask. Here we are. So some of the questions that I specifically ask whenever somebody reaches out, and let me set the stage. Sometimes event coordinators or small businesses that run market pop-ups, and I'm talking like, you know, sometimes there'll be like a citywide event. Sometimes there will be like a grower's market or farmer's market, or sometimes there will be a, a brick and mortar. We'll do kind of like a collective of small businesses together and they want to run like a, maybe a pop-up for an evening or a one-time thing. And it's not so annual or weekly. Usually what happens is if I don't know the people that are doing it, they'll reach out like through Instagram or via email, mostly through Instagram, which I'll be honest, is not my favorite. I'm just like getting more and more set in my ways in old school. And I just love a good email. It's a nice mile marker. Um, I have this like crazy OCD where I can't see a notification on Instagram without clicking it. And then I have to go back and remember, I digress. It's a really hard way of communication for me. It's not a you problem, it's a me problem. But a lot of them reach out on Instagram, especially if they're like a one-time pop-up and they're like, hey, we're planning this event and so on and so forth. So I've set the scene. Usually what will happen is immediately when they reach out, I check my calendar, um, obviously. But before even that, I check their social media. And this is kind of a numbers game, and I've got to be honest. I check their social media because if they are like the business or the event production company that is running it, I want to see what kind of proof is in the pudding to the work that they're doing on their end that might have nothing to do with this event, uh, but has everything to do with their presence and how they're going to market. Because... I got a lot of things I got to market on my end. I've got to market new product releases. I've got to market like all kinds of things that I've got to do, like my workshops, my bottom lines that I am completely in a chokehold with. And so I look at these markets, especially these one and dones, like as a very great boost of business for sure. But these are like my extracurricular activities. And so if they reach out on social media, I'm immediately like perusing what they're doing and how they're representing their business. Then what I'm asking them are things like, what are the dates? What are the setup times? Is there an application fee? Um, how many other vendors are going to be there? How many other candle makers are going to be there? How many people are you expecting in attendance? And that one's always like a tough question because I never really feel like I'm getting the right answer. And that's okay because they might not know, like that might be their first event. And so they're probably giving me like an estimation of some sort. But beyond that, they're obviously not going to like be conservative with that number. They're going to be quite liberal with that number because no one's going to be like, oh, well, like a hundred people are coming. I'll be like, deuces. Please ask those questions because I just want to know as much as I possibly can about the event. So I can kind of size up well, if there's going to be a bunch of other candle makers there and, you know, if there's a ton of hours that are involved and the setup and the teardown, like I can kind of quickly assess. I've done enough markets now that I'm going to know if it's just me or if I'm going to need to hire someone to be with me and if it's going to be really worth my time and energy. And I've been a lot more selective about this. And let me just give you guys a little backstory. I first started making candles. I knew I was going to do a bunch of markets. I think that they are absolutely vital. 
I think that it's so important for you to get out in your community. I don't care how shy you are. You can be shy and absolutely run a market. I firmly believe that. Um, and you can stay true to yourself. That's a beautiful thing. And I do think that these things are so vital is because you're out in the markets, you're getting recognition. Not everyone's on social media. That's an Achilles heel that we are really relying heavy and deep on. Not to say that it's not a necessary contender for us to like suit up and play, but you catch my drift. So these markets are absolutely vital. One, because you meet other vendors, which is really nice. And then you can start to have a little community of vendors that you get to learn from them. Like, hey, what other markets have you been doing? Are there any that you recommend? Like, have you heard about this one? Have you heard about that one? That's been vital for me. But then also, there's just so much sight unseen of people being like, have no idea who my brand is. And so they get to know my brand. I digress. The next thing about these is that I always ask those questions because if it's going to be something where it's not just me that can get this market done and it's multiple hours and I'm like not too impressed with what the promotions are going to be, then more than likely I will set that one out. And I can say that because started in 2020, 2021, I was already hell bent on being involved in markets. 2022 though was my strategy year. And that was the year that I was like, I am going to do as many markets as I physically possibly can do. And I ran myself into the ground. That is a full disclaimer. I'm not saying you need to go and do that, but I am a very analytical person and I wanted as much proof to the pudding, AKA numbers and actual facts for me to make decisions for the year that now I'm in, which is 2023. I wanted to know what markets were profitable for me. I wanted to know what markets would surprise me, what markets would probably let me down, what markets would maybe be better for me not to be at. So when I do have a full-time employee, I could send my full-time employee and still make a little bit of dough, but maybe not necessarily burn myself at both ends. <laughs> Pun kind of intended because you don't burn a candle at both ends, but you catch my drift. I wanted to collect all the data that I possibly could, and I did. And so now this year, I have had a full strategy where I'm like already in touch with markets that were like above and beyond, like the holy grail that I wanted to get involved with um, again this year. I've already been in touch with those that I don't want to miss. And then anything else is just kind of like supplemental. And obviously, there's going to be new businesses that come about. Like, for instance, there was a really cool market that I must have fallen asleep on the marketing of, and I try and follow a lot of, like, accounts. But there was one that was just this past weekend in Santa Fe that I literally had, like, FOMO, which is so unwarranted because I don't know any of the organizers. I knew some of the vendors that were going to be there, but I haven't worked with them, like, one-on-one -on -one or in any capacity that would warrant me, like being involved in the market, but it looked like such a huge turnout. And just like one of those markets that you just kind of want to be at, you know, like one of those events that you're just like, I'm going to put this one on the calendar, as opposed to the market where you're like, oh, you know, if we're free, like maybe we'll stop by. You catch my drift? Those are like different things. So there was that market that I'm already like, um, can I get involved with you guys like already for 2024? So that's something going on. Another thing about the markets is I keep track of all like almost like my testing notes. I keep track of notes like when I'm done with the markets. And I know that this sounds like very like, whoa, girl, chill. But after you do so many markets, especially after I had one last year, like the year I had last year where I just went to town with all of the markets, I like started to like, they started to bleed together and I didn't really know like which ones were great, which ones weren't, especially for the ones that are weekly, like a farmer's market. I started to pay attention to like, are the ones at the first of the month good? Are the ones at the end of the month good or the middle of the month? I started to pay attention to like the holiday weekend ones weren't actually really that great for the weekly markets. Um, more specialty markets were better for those weekends than the, than the weekly ones. And I just started to like pay attention to different rhythms that were going on in my city. And another thing is, is that we don't have a lot of big sports teams here, but there is like a soccer team here. And I noticed that when they play on Friday nights, the Saturday morning markets are like crickets because people are probably just like, 
still sleeping because there's not a lot of sporting events here. And so people all like go out and drone to those soccer games. And then the next morning, like either it's later day sales or there's like no sales at all. So I just would document a lot of notes to pay attention to like what were the trends that I was seeing and what sort of reason could I attach things to. And it's really funny because anytime that I have any sort of like health thing where I'm like coughing, I'm like, huh, what is the thing? Why do I have a headache? Have I not drank enough water? And then I immediately like go through this analysis paralysis of like, what could be the reason between me having a headache or a cough? It's the same thing with like my analysis of the markets. Like what could be the reason for this day of poor sales or great sales? All right. That was a lot of information. I'm done trimming and wicking my wicks, wicking my wicks, wicking my wicks. I don't know, but I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have specific questions or things that you're like, how do you figure out this or that? Please leave them below because I'm certain that I missed a bunch of them. But like, this is the stuff that I could clearly talk about forever. But it's like way past my lunchtime and I can see like and feel my blood sugar just being like, Aah! so I'm gonna let you guys go because I just rambled a lot. Leave the questions that you've got. 30 for 30 is gonna be coming back soon. I'm just a little in over my beautiful head. And you guys, I hope you're doing wonderful with your businesses and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.